What is up all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And today, you can probably tell by the stack of image books or because of the title of the actual episode, I'm gonna be talking about my favorite top 10 image graphic novels, or titles rather. Uh, it's not a countdown though, so keep that in mind. Please stay tuned. And welcome back all you mentees. Now, before I get started, I wanted to say that I've actually been writing down a lot of the ideas that you, the subscribers, have been wanting me to do. Whether it's a list or whether it's an overview of books, so prepare for some shout outs, proper shout outs now. I know a lot of people have been wanting me to make this list, but the last person that wanted this list was Dan Niles. So Dan Niles, he's one of our subscribers. Thank you so much for this idea. So without further ado, well, no, I guess not without further ado. Number one, some rules, right? This isn't a countdown. This is just my top 10, right? I'd love to know what your top 10 is, so leave those comments down below. Or if you don't have top 10, top 5, top 3, whatever it is, image series, it can be ongoing, it could be a one-time shot or a one-time deal, one-time shot, what the hell am I talking about? Anyway, let's get started before I lose my voice again. It is to no surprise that we are kicking off the list with Saga. This is Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples' masterpiece. And it's no surprise because if you've been watching the channel, you know that this has already been on some of my lists before. This has been on a lot of people's favorite graphic novels list, and rightly so, at least to me. It is Star Wars meets Romeo and Juliet meets every damn good story in a heavy metal magazine. And if you don't remember what those were or aren't familiar with those were, that for a lot of kids my age, kids my age when I was younger, um, was our first taste of European comic book storytelling. So, you know, you had vulgar language, you had nudity, you had sex, things that you normally wouldn't see in superhero comics. That's what heavy metal was to us. And that's what this is. It is an anime come to life in this brutal, realistic take on family and what one is willing to do for that family. Saga. So how do I even begin to describe this next book? This is Greg Rucka and Michael Lark's Lazarus. I guess a cyberpunk mafia kind of story. So in this world that's been shattered into different kingdoms, um, they're all owned by these mob tech people. So they're all mobs and they're all techie. It's a pretty interesting world. And each one of these families has a Lazarus. And a Lazarus is an assassin, like a sometimes a cybernetic being, not going to reveal much more than that, that carries out all these missions for these families. And this is our protagonist here. This is Eve. She works for the, or forever Eve, rather, for the Carlisle family. And there's a lot of questioning as to what's real, what's not, what is to have a soul, and it is so good. We've done an old reader, new reader on this, and it deserves a spot in my top 10. It's beautifully drawn to by Michael Lark. Now, spoilers, in case you're new to the channel, you are not going to see Walking Dead on this list. However, you're going to see Robert Kirkman's other creation, and this is Invincible. And he did this with uh, Corey Walker. He created the series with Corey Walker and then Ryan Otley, who went on to just draw pretty much every issue of this. Now Ryan is working on Amazing Spider-Man with Nick Spencer. But uh, the series is about this character named Mark Grayson, whose father is a novelist uh, named Nolan Grayson, who used to be a superhero named the Omni-Man, and who also has a secret because he is a Vultramite, who is kind of like a Kryptonian. So think of like Superman. If Superman had a kid, and now this kid is half human, half Kryptonian, or in this case, half Voltramite, he inherited all his father's powers, and he's set on to become a superhero. However, there's a lot of lies and secrets and twists and betrayals. <clears throat> on this list, you know, it, it's, it, it, this list is everywhere because there's like sad stories, there's happy stories. And this one, to me, I think the entire time I was reading it was just a fun comic book. And what makes me enjoy comic books so much is stories like this that just keep me coming back for more. Even though there's not a lot of meat on that bone, I don't know if that makes sense. It's just a fun story and a fun take on a Superman-like family. It's wonderfully done. Although the ending could have been padded out a little bit more, I think it kind of ended a little rushed. But you know what? That's just my opinion. But I think, yes, Invincible deserves a spot on this list. It... I was reading it monthly, so that's why. Remember when I said this list is everywhere? Sad stories, happy stories, fun stories, optimistic stories. Um, this one here is somewhere in the middle because it's both beautiful, sad, 
and just wonderful. And that is God Country. We've done an old reader, new reader on this. We've talked, I've talked about it up and highly. It's probably my, it's the reason why I enjoy Donny Cates so much and made him one of my favorite writers. And also uh, put Jeff Shaw to me on the map. I think his art on this is wonderful. So it's the story of Emmett Quinlan. And Emmett is this old guy who has dementia. And it's gotten to the point that it's so bad his own son comes to his house and he curses his son out. He curses his granddaughter, who was a little kid, and his daughter-in-law. He's just losing it. And that all changes when this tornado, I'll leave it at that, uh, just comes and levels his home and leaves a giant sword. And Emmett picks up the sword, and it's a giant badass sword. And he's able to remember everything. And I mean everything. His family, his friends, his wife, everything that's happened in his life and who he is as long as he's holding that sword. And of course, you know, other gods are coming for that sword because they need it. And there's this huge fight. It's just a badass, beautifully drawn and just beautifully told story that has this amazing, like almost like as uh, Norse mythology into it. But um, no, if you have not read this, do yourself a favor. This is a wonderful story. And it's all told in this one trade paperback. It's also available, damn it, in hardcover. Uh, that was only available at comic book stores, but I forgot to pick that up, so... God Country. Now, if you're writing these down, or if you're checking this list off, I will say that out of all of these, this one here is the slowest burn. But the payoff is so damn worth it. This is Jonathan Hickman and Nick Dragota's East of West. It's a post-apocalyptic Western tale. And if that hasn't hooked you yet, I mean, I don't know what else will. That, that to me, sold me. Um, so it's the story of the Four Horsemen, but it's done in a pretty unique way. Uh, the Four Horsemen are reborn again. Um, however, there's only three of them, and they're all looking for death. Because death refused to die along with them in order for, um, for him to be reborn. And I love the way that they're recreated and re-envisioned in this. Because you don't know if the Horsemen are the... Because, you know, whenever we think of horsemen, we think of the end of times. So are they bad? Are they here to destroy Earth? Are they good? Um, I think the series is now finally over. There's two oversized hardcovers and trade paperbacks available of this. Uh, but if you haven't checked it out, it is completely worth it. Like I said, it's a little bit of a slow burn because you know how Jonathan Hickman, if you're used to his writing style, how much he likes padding things out a little, little by little. And then eventually just blows your mind with some twists. Um, that's what he does in this. And East of West is freaking awesome. Now, before I go any further, I want to remind you to please don't forget to smash that like button and hit that notifications button to let you know when our videos are going live. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please think about subscribing because we put out videos every day. Even when I lose my damn boys, I'm still pumping out videos. Now, this next one here, I don't see on a lot of people's list. Uh, when I used to watch videos or when I used to read articles about everybody's favorite image title, I would always see this left out. This is Glory, and I don't know if that's because Glory was an original Rob Liefeld character, so everybody relates to her like a TNA character. I mean, she kind of was back then, though. But this is Joe Keating and Sophie Campbell's retake on this character. Like, they kind of reboot her origin and just have fun with the character. It makes you care about this character of Glory, who, well, honestly, I really didn't give a shit about when it was coming out years ago but this i don't know i just kind of picked it up on a whim because i like the the just simple design to the hardcover and when i did i'm glad i picked it up because it became one of my favorite books and it might have been the time that i read it you know i was going through some rough times but i don't know it just spoke to me and i'm glad i picked it up on a whim and i ended up loving it sophie campbell has become one of my favorite artists um, she's gone on to do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for IDW, but this is the first time that I just got a taste of her artwork and it is wonderful. And like I said, it makes the character of Glory really endearing. So check it out. I know, like I said, this one's still available just because I don't think a lot of people know about it or have read it. It was very difficult to choose an Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips collaboration. Like, how do I even begin to do that? Like, I mean, I could just do a top 10 list, on those two creators. I, anywhere from Sleeper to Fade Out, but I guess if I had to choose one to symbolize their wonderful in-sync mastery when it comes to storytelling, Kill or Be Killed. Like, I don't know how, how they did this, but this series combines elements of both 
crime fiction, which is what they're known for, both of them working together ever since uh, Scene of the Crime, and then horror, but both psychological horror and also supernatural elements to bring you a story about a vigilante. Like, that's so damn awesome on paper, and it reads so good. It's available in trade paperbacks and in this oversized edition, which is the way I recommend it. Um, so it's the story of Dylan. And Dylan, this character right there in front, the hoodie, he's attempting to commit suicide. However, um, a demon saves his life, in, but he makes, a, he makes a deal with him is what it is. And he has to kill someone once a month in order for him to live. And he decides that he's going to start targeting criminals. And that's pretty much it. That's where kill or be killed comes from. It's a wonderful take on vigilantism. Vigilantism? Is that a word? I don't know. Uncanny Omar. Come up with words. I think. Uh, <clears throat> but yes, if you haven't checked it out, this is, to me, the top Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips collaboration. Now, we're getting to the last three. And you're probably wondering, where the hell's Prophet? Where's Spawn? Where is Walking Dead? Where's Savage Dragon? Again, this is my list. So just a reminder. So... I mentioned earlier that sometimes I like to read comic books for fun. And this is one that my brother, Tommy, so shout out to Tommy, much love, um, was the one that was like, you got to read True. It's wonderful. And I'm like, I don't know. It seems kind of hokey. So it's the story of this detective right here. His name is Tony Chu. And he's a psychopathic, which means that he gets a psychic impression from whatever he eats, whether it's pork, he remembers the last memory of the pig before he gets slaughtered, or chicken, same thing. Shout out to Pollo, anybody that's read this, you know what I mean, even though it was overused. Anyway, uh, there are six of these oversized hardcovers, and uh, there's a series of trade paperbacks, there's big editions too, uh, kind of like in the case of uh, Invincible. Some of these are all available in trade paperback and in hardcover edition, but this is the way that I got them. Um, so this is done by John Lehman, uh, who went to do, he's done things, uh, for DC and at Marvel and it's written or drawn by Rob Giori. I don't want to mess up his name, but now he's doing farmhand, but man, when they did this, it was just a lot of fun because even though he is a cybopathic, he's not the only one with powers when it comes to eating. Like you'll meet vampires. His sister has powers. It's just a lot of fun. His partner loses some limbs and becomes a cyborg. Oh, it's 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 an excellent, fun story. And honestly, I think there's 60 issues. Even the ending got me a little bit. So I heard they're coming back with more, so I can't wait for that. But yes, Chew, if you haven't read it, man, it's damn good. The least I say about this book, the better. Especially if you haven't seen the movie. There is a movie by uh, Chris Columbus. Um, but this is... Joe Kelly, yeah, Joe Kelly, the guy that wrote all those goofy Deadpool stories. This is his book. And he wrote this while, I, I love this story, he wrote this while his dad was going through dialysis. And when you read it, you can find, like, what parts of that story, or what parts of that life event he borrowed for the story. And like I said, the least I say about it, the better off you are. I promise it's a wonderful, emotional, tear-jerking roller coaster um the one thing i will say about this other than that about the writing is the artwork by ken namura if you're not a fan of manga because it has a very manga-ish art style please don't turn away from it because it does read from left to right in traditional american comic style and it it's black and white but it is beautifully told because the art style fits the tone of the story especially well never mind it's worth checking out there's a tight like a tight titan edition i think several trade paperbacks so it's it's in print still now this is my last one here and honestly i could do honorable mentions and cheat and say oh i could hell i could do honorable mentions and just rick remender i could say oh yeah low is great you should check out tokyo ghost but no i went with this and even though it's still ongoing deadly class one of the best comics by far that i've read in a long time so we are introduced to this world through our series protagonist right there, Marcus Lopez. Marcus is a kid that's like living on the streets. He's not doing well in school, but that's okay because his life is about to change. He is drafted into the King's Dominion School of Deadly Art. And it's a school where the teachers are assassins and they're training the students to be assassins. And damn, there's so many twists in this book. I, 
I couldn't, this is a series I could not put down. Um, literally, Rick Remender, and I believe the artist on this is Marcus, or uh, not Marcus Lopez, uh, Wes Craig, that's who it is. They were able to just put everything that I loved about Game of Thrones, throw in Harry Potter, Naruto, John Wick, and just make one badass comic book. And I didn't even tell you the best part. It takes place in the 80s. So you know the music is awesome. You know the settings are great. Oh, I could not put this series down. And I, I know there was a TV show that the uh, Amazing Amanda and I reviewed, but sadly that got canceled. But if you have not read this, damn, you are in for a treat. Deadly class, by far. Now, most of these books are still in print, and you can find them over at our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions, up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Now, that was my top 10 list. I would love to know what yours is. Leave those comments down below, and if you don't have 10, leave the top 5 that you enjoy. Or which one of the ones that I put on the list do you not agree with? Which ones would you have replaced? And if you haven't read any of them, maybe you should check them out. Just saying. Um, <clears throat> please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. Please don't forget to ring that bell for notifications where we have videos going live. We have videos every day. Now that I got my voice back, almost 100%. And thank you so much for watching again. More importantly, please don't forget to stay healthy and safe out there.